graduate. Yeah, uh huh, you know what it is. College Hill High School, a champion. Yeah, uh huh, screaming that's us. And when we on top, boy, quit fussing. All around. afternoon to everyone and welcome to the Collinsville Sports Complex here in Collinsville. We're across the street from the middle school and the water plant and we're here. The only reason we're ever here is for a little uh, Cahawk softball action as your Collinsville Cahawks get ready to play host to the Alton Lady Redbirds. My name is Todd Duke. Welcome into the pregame show brought to you today by LC's Pub in Caseyville. Great food, great drinks and great service is served up daily at LC's Pub in Caseyville. 605 North Main Street is where you will find them in Caseyville. You can give them a call for carryout orders, 618-855-9007. Well, the Cowks come into this contest with an overall record of 1-8. and eight. They are 0-2 in Southwestern Conference play. Their head coach is Jessica Schmidtling. She is in her fourth year and brings with her a record of 35 wins and 61 losses. Alton, they are 2-3 and three on the year, 1-1. One and one in Southwestern Conference play, and their head coach is Dan Carter. He is in his 24th year as the head coach at Alton High School. 466 wins, 325 losses. Lady Carrick's trying to snap out of a seven-game losing streak after their season opening 22-2 win at Father McGivney. That was all the way back on March the 11th. Collinsville put forth a, a great effort here at the Collinsville Sports Complex one week ago today in a eight-inning 5-2 loss to rival Edwardsville. The Lady Tigers put up single runs in the fourth and the fifth innings and were heading to what looked like a 2-0 win here at the Collinsville Sports Complex as the Lady Calcs were down to their final out in the bottom of the seventh before a bloop hit by center fielder Alexi Rafalowski, a walk to shortstop Katie Bardwell, and then a two-run triple by catcher Bailey Dimmick tied the game 2-2. Edwardsville, however, would score three times in the top of the eighth to take the 5-2 win. Pitcher Marissa Thomas allowed just one earned run in that game, walked two, and struck out six. Lady Redbird's softball program has been hit hard by Mother Nature this season thus far. Alton has had five games canceled and five games postponed, either due to wet or cold weather this season, including the cancellation of their scheduled game yesterday afternoon at Father McGivney. So... Alton has played only five games so far on their schedule compared to nine for Collinsville. Collinsville's also lost a couple of games to weather as well. Lady Redbirds started their season with back-to-back -back losses to Modern Day and Harden Calhoun, 8-2 and 6-1 respectively. Alton then picked up their first win on the season with a 5-3 win at O'Fallon last Wednesday before dropping a Southwestern Conference game 10-0 in five innings at Belleville West. Alton played... 
their last game six days ago where they lost 10 to six at Wood River. And this afternoon's game ends a stretch of five road games in a row for Alton High School. Alton comes in averaging about 3.6 runs per game. Collinsville comes in just a tad better than that at 3.8 runs per game, but the defensive side of things is a couple of runs different. Collinsville averaging giving up 8.3 runs per game so far this year, while Alton is giving up about 6.6. Speaking of Alexi Rafalowski, which I did just a moment ago, she is our latest senior to be interviewed for the senior interviews here on the Kayhawk Sports Network, and my conversation with the Lady Kayhawk softball center fielder Alexi Rafalowski comes your way next on the LC's Pub pregame show here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Looking for a little bite to eat in a nice, friendly establishment before heading out to a game? Look no further than Elsie's Pub in Caseyville. Just blocks from Collinsville High School, Elsie's Pub is the pub of choice for Kayhawk fans, before, after, or even during Kayhawk games. Elsie's Pub features a wide variety of traditional bar food, like burgers and fries, chicken wings and chicken strips, appetizers like pepper jack mac and cheese bites, fried pickles, and green beans. Plus, they have salads, fish, shrimp, and more. LC's Pub also features an outdoor patio, a gaming room, weekly poker tournaments, and a pool table, plus enough TVs for all the sports fans. And LC's Pub shows Kayhawk games live, as well as Blues and Cardinals games. LC's Pub, 605 North Main Street in Caseyville, right across the intersection from all pro tees. Call for carryout orders at 618-855-9007 and on Facebook at LC's Pub. LC's Pub, Kayhawk fans' pub of choice. Financial investments are very important, but so are the investments of time, patience, and encouragement our young athletes receive from their coaches, teachers, and mentors. Jason Regg, your Benjamin F. Edwards financial advisor, understands this. That's why Jason Regg is a proud supporter of your Collinsville Kayhawks and the Kayhawks Sports Network, as well as the Kayhawk Educator of the Month Award. For all of your investment needs, see financial advisor and investment vice president Jason Regg at the Benjamin F. Edwards office in Collinsville, located at 1008 Vandalia Street, or call Jason Reg at 618-223-5215 or visit BenjaminFEdwards.com. Benjamin F. Edwards, member SIPC. Collinsville Barbecue Supply, home of Code 3 Spices, is first responder owned by proud Cahawk alums. Located at 1966 Vandalia, Collinsville Barbecue Supply is your one-of-a-kind barbecue headquarters that focuses on everything barbecue and cooking. Providing the best American-made barbecue grills, in-person class instruction, smokers, rubs, sauces, accessories, and cooking expertise from professional barbecue experts, including an in-house chef and pit master. Code 3 Spices provides award-winning sauces and rubs that supports our nation's first responder and military organizations that focus on the fallen, suicide prevention, and PTSD awareness. Stop on by. See the guys at Collinsville Barbecue Supply for all of your cooking and grilling needs. Collinsville Barbecue Supply, home of the four-time world champion Patriot Sauce. Learn more about their products and mission in giving back to those who serve at CollinsvilleBarbecue.com or call 618-855-8855. We love to have you come work for the city of Collinsville. We have many positions available from seasonal jobs to full-time opportunities in many of our departments. From police and fire to Gateway Center, parks and recreation and city hall. Our employees enjoy great benefits like comprehensive medical plans, paid time off, tuition reimbursement and more. Visit the city's website, collinsvilleil.org to apply and learn more about working for the city of Collinsville. Looking for a little bite to eat in a nice, friendly establishment before heading out to a game? Look no further than Elsie's Pub in Caseyville. Just blocks from Collinsville High School, Elsie's Pub is the pub of choice for Kayhawk fans, before, after, or even during Kayhawk games. Elsie's Pub features a wide variety of traditional bar food, like burgers and fries, chicken wings and chicken strips, appetizers like pepper jack mac and cheese bites, fried pickles, and green beans. Plus, they have salads, fish, shrimp, and more. Elsie's Pub also features an outdoor patio, a gaming room, weekly poker tournaments, and a pool table, plus enough TVs for all the sports fans. And Elsie's Pub shows Kayhawk games live, as well as Blues and Cardinals games. Elsie's Pub, 605 North Main Street in Caseyville, right across the intersection from all pro tees. Call for carryout orders at 
855-9007 and on Facebook at LC's Pub. LC's Pub, Hawk fans' pub of choice. The weather's not cooperating with outdoor sports, but outdoor sports is where we are. We have some softball for you today. Collinsville getting ready to take on Alton. We continue our interviews with our seniors from this year's Lady Kayhawk softball team, and that brings us to number five on your roster. Four-year varsity starter senior Lexi Rafalowski, who plays center field and is going to St. Louis Community College on a softball scholarship. So uh, thank you very much for joining us, and let's uh, find out about a little bit about you and your family. Okay, thank you for having me. Family. Oh, family. Okay. Got my mom, Mandy, my dad, Danny. I have a little sister named Abby. She's in sixth grade. And then I have three dogs and a cat. Dogs' names. Aladdin. She's a little wiener dog. I don't like her very much. <laughs> and I have a cat named Milo. Tell me a little bit about the uh, younger sister. Is she going to get into softball or sports or anything like that? Oh, she's already into softball. She's a little bit of a stud. I think she might be better than me, but I won't tell her that to her face. But, yeah, she's already in softball, and she's doing really good, so I'm proud of her. Where does the uh, softball bug come from in your family? Um, Honestly, I don't really know. My cousin played softball growing up, but as far as, like, my, like, parents or, um, like, aunts or anything, they never played growing up, so it just kind of happened. All right, let's talk about you, and uh, I wrote down some of your stats. This is, like, four years combined. Batting 317. Five doubles, two triples, 15 runs batted in, 68 runs. You have stolen 75 bases in your four years and have only been caught three times. So tell me, what's the best stat of the ones I just read off that you like the most? Um, I definitely still say the batting average because at the end of the day, the steals, they're great. They feel great. But I know that batting average is helping my team. And, I mean, the stolen bases do too. But, you know, you can't have the stolen bases until you get on base. So. Very true. All right, which one of those stats would you like to – be better and look better at I wouldn't say the doubles and the triples I wish I would could say I was a more of a power hitter but I don't know I feel like I'm pretty secure with the stolen bases part but I definitely like to get the triples and the doubles up all right what do you enjoy uh, the most playing softball offense or defense oh definitely defense I love defense I like to chase around a ball yeah, you're pretty good at that too from what I've seen so far all right, uh, let's move on to the category called My Favorite Things, which is your favorite things. Your favorite sweet snack? Ooh, the Nerd Gummy Clusters. All right. Favorite salty snack? I'd say like any chips. I'm not really picky. Okay, I like chips. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Which one's your favorite? Dinner. My mom, and I'd say like anything Italian. Lasagna up there? Oh, definitely, yeah. All right, your favorite restaurant? Ooh, late. Favorite music genre? It's hard to pick out some more some like rap or like pump up rock music, but it really just depends on the day and my mood. All right, so depending on your day and your mood, you have a favorite musical group or a musical artist? Ooh, if I just had to pick overall artists, I'd say like Zach Bryan or like Olivia Rodrigo. Those are my top two. All right, are you a uh, book person or a movie person? Movie. What's your favorite movie? A League of Their Own is a really good one. Yeah, that is a very good one. Um, TV shows? You got any favorite TV shows? Lately, I've been watching Station 19. It's not really popular, but any crime shows I can get into, too. I've been into Blue Bloods lately, so I'm binge watching them. Your future, we already said that you're going to uh, St. Louis Community College on a softball scholarship. What is going to be your major and why? I'm going psychology, and I want to do crime scene investigating, so I feel like psychology would help for a two-year degree because it kind of like le lets me know how people's minds work. Sometimes that can be dangerous. All right, uh, tell me about high school. What is your favorite class in high school? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, I'd say English. English is probably my top class. Least favorite? Anything related to math. I'm with you there, girl. All right, uh, time for some shout-outs. Uh, who do you want to say hi to? Um, hi, Grandma Vera. She's probably watching this right now. Hi, Grandma Patty. She's probably watching too. Uh, shout-out to my parents. Shout-out to Abby. Shout out to Coach Jess, all my coaches I've had. Um, yeah, just thank you for all the support. All right, you guys got uh, Alton here today. You need to uh, get a win on the winning side of things, man. So how are you going to do that? Um, Alton is a good team. We normally compete with them really, pretty well, but I think definitely we just continue the energy that we had in the Edwardsville game, and I think we'll definitely come out with a W. Alexi Rafalowski, thank you very much for the thank visit. Good, much, good luck in your future. Thank you. That is Alexi Rafalowski, number five in your program and the center fielder for your Collins Lady Kayhawk softball team. We'll take a break here on the LC's Pub pregame show. When we come back, we'll throw the starting rosters for each team your way. That's coming up next on the Kayhawk Sports Network. 
Looking for a little bite to eat in a nice, friendly establishment before heading out to a game? Look no further than LC's Pub in Caseyville, just blocks from Collinsville High School. LC's Pub is the pub of choice for Cahawk fans, before, after, or even during Cahawk games. LC's Pub features a wide variety of traditional bar food, like burgers and fries, chicken wings and chicken strips, appetizers like pepper jack mac and cheese bites, fried pickles, and green beans. Plus, they have salads, fish, shrimp, and more. LC's Pub also features an outdoor patio, a gaming room, weekly poker tournaments, and a pool table, plus enough TVs for all the sports fans. And LC's Pub shows Cahawk games live, as well as Blues and Cardinals games. LC's Pub, 605 North Main Street in Caseyville, right across the intersection from All Pro Tees. Call for carryout orders at 618-855-9007 and on Facebook at LC's Pub. LC's Pub, Cahawk fans' pub of choice. At Visionary Wealth Advisors, we empower you to see your future before it's your future. To create your inheritance. To build your vision. To anticipate the known and unknown. And to find potential in both. And build new dawns. Visionary Wealth Advisors. Visit Brad Keen at his Collegeville office at 106 North Clinton or call 618-467-8420. Looking for a more upscale place to have a few drinks and some great food? Look no further than the Speakeasy Parlor in Maryville. Come inside for some one-of-a-kind crafted cocktails and some elevated bar food that highlights fresh ingredients. Then, try your luck in the private slot machine room. And don't forget to check out the Speakeasy sister company, Plan Shop Live, just three doors down. Plan Shop Live is a health-focused lunch cafe open Tuesday through Friday from 11 to 3. Speakeasy Parlor, 2713 North Center Street in Maryville, open seven days a week with happy hour specials during the week from 5 to 7 p.m. Speakeasy Parlor in Maryville, 618-205-3540. And once again, we welcome you back to the Collinsville Sports Complex as we get you ready for a little softball action between Collinsville and Alton. My name is Todd Duke. On the other microphone is Chris Keller. Chris Keller, we need a win. Uh, yeah, good. Uh, almost got the one last week against Edwardsville. Calix had that chance in the bottom of the seventh, came ever so close. So hopefully uh, maybe we can tar start turning these things around here, see how we do against uh, Alton Redbirds. Maybe the Calix are ready to rattle the bats here on this cold day. Well, uh, let's get the bats hot because there's nothing else hot about this day. Sun's trying to come out every once in a while, but uh, the clouds are a little bit stubborn after the system is moving through, and it's continuing to move, but it's taking its sweet time in doing so. All right, here are your starting lineups. We'll begin with the Alton Lady Redbirds as they will bat first in the top of the first. You will find batting in the leadoff spot will be their pitcher, Grace Presley. Batting second and playing center field is Jordan Watsick. And uh, batting in the third, Savannah Russell. Morgan Plummer will be batting sixth and playing left field. The designated player is Jody Landyut. She will be batting in the seventh spot. Sophia Hanneken plays shortstop and bats eighth. And Caitlin Brawley will bat ninth and play right field. And the designated player, Landyut, is batting for the third baseman. And her name is Meadow Gray. For Collinsville, when they come up in the bottom of the first inning, they will lead things off with our pregame guest, Lexi Rafalowski. Lexi will lead things off and play center field. Katie Bardwell bats second and plays shortstop. Bailey Dimmick is behind the plates, doing behind the plate, doing the catching duties today and batting third. In the cleanup spot is the designated player for Collinsville, Addie Stone. Faith Fairchild will be batting fifth and playing second base. Keegan Edwards. Bats sixth and plays first base. On the hot corner, Carson Mode. She'll be batting in the number seven spot. Batting eighth is the left fielder, Ali Viluff. And batting ninth is Emma Hilton, and she will be holding down the duties in right field this afternoon. And our designated player, Addie Stone, will be batting for our pitcher, and that would be Marissa Thomas. One more break coming your way as the two teams are being announced here to the crowd. Not much of one on this cold day, but there are a few scattered fans around. 
And uh, Collinsville being introduced right now. One final break, as I mentioned, coming your way. We'll play the national anthem, and then we'll get to some baseball, and we will do that in just a moment here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. All Pro Tees in Caseyville is your place for custom apparel and has been for over 20 years now. Why? All Pro Tees can handle any size project, big or small, and they specialize in large group orders. At All Pro Tees, quality is number one on their list of priorities, as is evident by their excellent service staff. Did we mention All Pro Tees has over 20 years of experience? They can even help with fundraisers and event merchandising for your group. And of course, All Pro Tees is your destination for everything Collinsville Cayhawks. So for all of your apparel needs, for civic groups, sports teams, business outings, or even a family reunion, your apparel needs stop at All Pro Tees. All Pro Tees in Caseyville at 2240 South Morrison Avenue. Online at allprotees.com. Right across the street from Cayhawk Stadium. All Pro Tees, 618-344-2200. No one likes a dirty house. It's work that almost no one wants to do. Why not get someone to do that work for you? Kara Gray with Rags to Riches Cleaning Service would love to take that task off your to-do list. Kara is a homegrown Collinsville High School graduate and the owner of Rags to Riches. From floors to ceilings, from baseboards to light fixtures, Rags to Riches can clean them all. No job is too big or too small. Call Kara Gray at Rags to Riches Cleaning Service to schedule a free estimate today at 618 618- 979-9634 or visit Rags to Riches Cleaning Service on Facebook. Looking for a new place to catch the game with cold drinks and great food? Look no further than 1101 Bar and Grill in Caseyville. 1101 Bar and Grill features pizza, burgers, wraps, and salads, plus seven large screen TVs to catch the latest Kayhawk games and all the pro sports across the spectrum, plus all the college football and basketball you can handle. 1101 Bar and Grill in Caseyville, 1101 Caseyville Road, right across the street from Cayhawk Stadium. 1101 Bar and Grill for carryout orders at 618-223-1332. Welcome back to the Collinsville Sports Complex. Todd Duke and Chris Kettler with you as we are just about set for this contest between Collinsville and Alton. Going on over here behind our uh, press box and over my right shoulder, the... Uh, Freshman boys baseball team. Well, I guess they don't. Hawk Broadcast Club Student Network. Zach Roseman has the baseball game on the varsity side of things as Staunton invades the field at Fletcher Field. So we got all kinds of sports to be paying attention to. Of course, Cardinals opening day is today. And right now in the fifth inning, the Redbirds are losing by a score of 3-1, to one, a single home run. Uh, and a two-run home run has done the damage for the Marlins. Cardinals, uh, their run came on a uh, solo shot by Yvonne Herrera, who is batting today for Wilson Contreras. Contre Contreras and Brendan Donovan got dinged with pitched balls yesterday in the uh, San Diego series finale in that one. So both of them are out today. Matt Carpenter just went on the 10-day uh, IL, so the injuries continue racking up for your St. Louis Cardinals, but we're hoping they can pull out a win here. The uh, freshman team, because I can't see that far, and uh, <laughs> I won't be able to check out that scoreboard. Do they have a scoreboard over there? Nope. This nope. is the only field with a scoreboard here right. at the at the sports complex. And I guess Alton this doesn't have a JV team or something this year because no, no JV yeah. team going on for softball. Yeah, the uh, our JV team is supposed to be practicing somewhere today. I'm not really I sure. Th I think they're in the building. Where that is? Okay. Like I said it's a little chilly. Looks like we're going to be around 47 degrees here to start this game. Sun trying to peek through, but like you said, the clouds are doing what they do. Hanging tough. All right, Marissa Thomas in the circle. She is into her 10th game pitch this year. She has a 1-7 record and a 4.17 earned run average, and Thomas has struck out 41 and has walked 21. Grace Presley will lead things off here for Collinsville in the top, or excuse me, for Alton in the top of the first. Presley comes in batting 267 and is looking for her first RBI of the year. As I mentioned, Alton has only played five games so far this year because of the uh, wet weather or the cold weather. You, you name it, and it's been happening around here. Already started, and uh, the next pitch, the 1-0 pitch to Presley, swinging a chance for Bardwell at shortstop. She gloves it, throws in time for out number one, and that is the way that this game gets started. Let's set the defense for you here as we write down the old 6-3 put out of Presley. Ali Viloff is in left field. Lexi Rafalowski in, Lexi Rafalowski in center. Emma Hilton is in right. Carson Mode at third. Bardwell, as we mentioned, at short. Faith Fairchild at second. 
Keegan Edwards is at first, and Marissa Thomas is pitching for Alton, which is Jordan Watsick, the center fielder. Watsick leads her team in the batting category with a 316 average, three runs batted in so far on the young season for Alton. Here, and that belongs to Morgan Plummer. But as I mentioned, they've only played five games, so a little bit of a smaller sample size than the uh, Kayhawks in their nine games. Collinsville's out there in their brand new light purple jerseys. They have white numbers on the fronts and the backs and the word Kayhawks written across the fronts of their jerseys. They have CHS right underneath the neck on the backs of those jerseys. Alton Lady Redbirds, they're here in the sinking low to the dirt by Keegan Edwards and two 6-3 putouts have brought us Lacey Fisher to the plate, the catcher for Alton, batting 200 on the year with a couple of runs batted in. Good solid defense so far by Bardwell, making the two outs. The last throw was a little low, but good job snagging it over there first by Edwards. Here is Thomas pitching to the catcher, Lacey Fisher. Both catchers in both of these lineups today batting in the number three spot. Dimmick will have a chance to bat in the bottom of the first, which we hope comes here after this pitch by Thomas. Here is the 0-1 swing, and that's going to be a base hit that's going to fall right down in front of Alexi Rafalowski. She's out there. I know. Who's who, <laughs> and it looks like they're going to start a, a uh, courtesy runner for the catcher here, but we'll never know her number because yep. she's got her jacket on. Can't see the numbers. So one runner on, two out, and the next batter to the cleanup hitter, the second baseman, Lauren O'Neill, batting 308 on the year with three runs batted in. Glad that you are with us here on a chilly, cloudy Thursday afternoon. Temperature is right around 42 at game time. Swinging a foul ball, that goes over the press box. One strike away from getting out of this. Clean single for the last batter. Now gets ahead 0-2. Wind is blowing straight in today, and we have the uh, press box windows closed, and my camera is right up against the glass. So uh, if it's a little fuzzy, that's why. Swinging a high pop fly for the visitors and the Alton Lady Redbirds. So they strand a runner after getting... One hit in the inning, and Collinsville will come to the plate for the first time here this afternoon. Bottom of the first comes your way next, and the Kayox will bat for the first time here this afternoon. Are you in need of a new mailbox to go with your new home? How about a new mailbox to replace your old one? Look no further than Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes in Collinsville. From economy to custom, Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes can create a mailbox that suits your needs. Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes is licensed and insured. They use only high-quality materials and offer a satisfaction guarantee policy. Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes can also make your very own axe throwing set, hanging or standing. Whether you need that axe throwing set or a new mailbox, you need Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes in Collinsville. For more information, get a hold of Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes at 618-680-0208 or online at needanewmailbox.com. <laughs> The Collinsville Area Community Foundation is our community's charitable foundation. We connect people, support programs, and guide resources to help our community thrive. Our board is made up of local leaders that donate their time and expertise to identify opportunities for long-term community impact in and around Collinsville. Find out more about scholarships, grants, and ways to give back to the city we love by visiting CollinsvilleFoundation.com. Once again, welcome back to the Collinsville Sports Complex. Collinsville coming up to the plate for the first time today. Bottom of the first is where we are. Lexi Rafalowski will lead things off against Grace Presley in the circle. Presley, this is her fourth start of the year. She has three complete games already on the year, and she is 2-2 two and two with a 4.58 earned run average. She has struck out 47 and has only walked seven. There's no way that they're going to get the speedy Rafalowski. Rafalowski came in batting 292 with a couple of runs batted in, and that is her Falowski in her career as a Kayhawk, and she's only been caught three times. Yeah, it looks like she might be going here. Yep, she, she does is. Off There's the a throw, and it is not in time, and off to the stolen base. Now 12 stolen bases on the year for Lexi. And a runner at second base, and no one down. I wasn't watching. Pass ball or wild pitch? Uh, pitch was way high. The the catcher had to jump up over and get that one. We'll call it a wild pitch uh, then. With wild pitch. Yeah. She almost had it, though. Heck of an effort. Rafalowski was thinking about going, took a few steps off, but then once saw the catcher wasn't going to get First baseman, 
Savannah Russell puts on the tag, so three unassisted, but an RBI nonetheless for Katie Bardwell, and Collinsville jumps out front first, one to nothing in favor of the Lady Cahawks, and here comes Bailey Dimmick leading the club in the batting department in a big way. 571 is Dimmick's average. He has one home run, nine runs batted in, eight doubles on the year. We told you about that triple in the last game against Edwardsville, and that is the only triple so far on the year for Bailey Dimmick. And let's set the defense here for Alton. Morgan Plummer is in left field. Jordan Watson in center field. Caitlin Brawley is in right field around the horn. Meadow Gray at third base. Sophie Hannigan at shortstop. Lauren O'Neill at second. It's off up front. And a go here with the lead to start the game. It have, hasn't happened too many other games so far this year. Playing ahead with the lead. It's hot spot, man. Outside. Yes. Outside there is, they're definitely not giving Bailey Demick anything. Well, well, I'm trying to get this hot spot to stay working, but I'll move it and it'll work, and then no good. And that's on the outside corner. That's a called from the right placement instead of being nice. outside. From full count pitch, that one. And she walked. Next up, designated player number 99. Second base runner of the inning for Collinsville. First walk issue. That's surprising considering she's only given up seven so far this year. Doesn't look like a big overpowering pitcher, but she must be able to keep control and give good placement. Next pitch by Presley into Addie Stone is a ball, Stone coming in, batting 176 with four runs batted in, and this thing pops up every once in a while too, and I'm like. I don't know what Sylvester Sloan's got going on, but I don't know. I don't, really I, don't, I don't know how to close it. I don't know what that is. Okay. Oh, come on. Oh, that made it. <laughs> man, oh man. <laughs> oh, fun stuff at the old uh, press box today. Wi-Fi is going wonky, and. Then some stupid window pops up that I don't need to pop up. But one to nothing in favor of Collinsville. One out runner on at first base. Two and one the count to Addie Stone. Hopefully all those gremlins are out of the way now. We can get down to business. Next pitch by Presley is high. And it's three and one now the count to Addie Stone. Yeah, now she's in danger of walking. Another batter here. He said she only came in with seven. Can she go back to back? She could. And the 3-1 pitch on the way. Swing and a miss by Stone. She had the green light, and she was going all the way. Yeah, the zone's been pretty big, too, so. Nolan Arenado doubled in the bottom of the fifth, and the Cardinals are trailing the Marlins now. Pitch, and the lefty delivers, and that one's up high. Back-to-back -back walks have put runners on first and second here for second Collinsville. Baseman, so Faith Fairchild will get her chance here with one out and two on as Presley does walk back-to-back -back batters. Fairchild up to the plate, and Faith on the air, batting 286 with four runs batted in. Presley in a bit of a jam. Bunt down the third baseline. It's a beautiful bunt. Everybody's going to be safe, I believe, and the ball gets away. A run is going to score as Bailey Dimmick comes around third and scores on the throwing error. The third baseman wasn't ready for that one again. Not too far in. And then she had to chase that one down and Caused a bad throw there. Run scores. Well, I'm giving Faith Fairchild an RBI single because she was going to beat that out anyway. Oh, yeah. And the throw yes, just was. happened to sail. And Collinsville is up now 2 to nothing with runners on first and third. And here is Keegan Edwards, the first baseman. Keegan on the year batting 174 with four runs batted in. Fairchild went with that one and took second base. So Collinsville with a couple of stolen bases here in this inning. And now runners on second and third. Swing and a high fly ball. On the move is the right fielder. That is Brawley. And the throw is going to come in. And Addie Stone is going to go back to third base. Able to get her in. That would have been a base hit. Fairchild went way off second base. She was way down the line. I think they were trying to get him to bite on her and then maybe get stoned and then get in the rundown and get that run in that way. And there is Carson Moe taking a strike on the inside corner. Carson on the year batting 091, one run batted in. She has a double and a triple 
to go along with a uh, couple of singles. Looking for something to hit here as she's got runners in scoring position. That one is high. One ball, one strike the count to Carson Moe. Two to nothing in favor of Collinsville here in the home half of the first inning. Allie Vila waits on deck. Addie Stone is at third base. Faith Fairchild is at second base. And that makes the count to Carson Mode. Three-sport athlete at Collinsville High School. Volleyball, basketball, and softball. Next pitch is a called there. strike three. Umpire needs a little bit of a better move. <laughs> he's not too enthusiastic about no, it. No, he's not. There was no doubt that was a strike. It's a little bit cold, but I understand. So we have two runs score on two hits. There was one error committed in the inning and two runners left on base. And we will now head to the top of the second inning. And the Collinsville Lady Cayhawks are on top by a score of two to nothing. Looking for good food, good times, and good people? Look no further than the Bridge Inn in Caseyville. Just over the bridge from the Cayhawk Stadium, Bridge Inn features a friendly and courteous staff that serves up the coldest drinks and the best food in the Metro East. Lunch and dinner is available daily with a breakfast menu every Saturdays and Sunday morning. And don't forget about fantastic fish fry Fridays. Bridge Inn also features pool tournaments on most weekends and a gaming area for the over 21 crowd. Bridge Inn in Caseyville. Check them out at 519 North Main Street in Caseyville. Call for carryout orders at 618-344-3530. The best is yet to come at the Bridge Inn in Caseyville. 618-344-3530. Back here at the Collinsville Sports Complex, Todd Duke, Chris Kettler along with you. Glad you are with us. And uh, we head to the top of the second inning, and Collinsville is leading by a score of two to nothing. Two runs in the first inning. Middle of the order coming up here for Alton, and the first batter gets out of the way of one high and tight. That is Savannah Russell, the first baseman. Russell on the year batting 154 with a couple of runs batted in. We assume that's the right batter. We don't know any numbers. No. <laughs> if they change, we're uh, kind of screwed. And the lefty, Russell up there, followed by Morgan Plummer and Josie Landiet. It's out there. Viloff has one out in left field. Hilton has one out in right field. And the first and second baseman, Edwards and Fairchild, both have on sweatshirts as well. Did we mention it's chilly? No, it's not chilly. It's cold. Swing and a miss, and down on strikes goes Savannah Russell. First strike out of the game for Marissa Thomas. And that will bring up Morgan Plummer, the left fielder. And Plummer comes in batting 143. She has the only home run. She stands in from the right side and awaits the first pitch from Marissa Thomas. Here it is. Right down central, strike one. Last three pitches is pretty good. Second to last pitch, the last batter really set up the strikeout pitch. She comes with here at 01. Popped up. Carson Mode is going to call forward in foul territory, and she'll make the, te the catch. That's two foul pop ups for Alton so far here. Got a good break on that one. Eyes up real well. And quickly, there are two away. Here is Josie Landyut, the designated player this afternoon. And Landyut is batting 100 on the year, looking for her first RBI. And she takes a little chin music as well. Peeling inside and high. One base hit in 14 at bats for Landyet. And the pitch by Thomas outside. Ball two, two and oh. Tries to make that adjustment there and next one sails the other way. Thomas and company. Ready to have a 1-2-3 inning. Let's see if we can make that happen. This one stays high as well, 3-0. and Just a little high there. I don't think you're going to get the high pitch from this, of this umpire. They'll give you both sides and I think a little low, but. And that one's high too, so a four-pitch walk to land yet. Just like the first inning. Thomas got the first two to ground out. And got the first two here in this inning, but another base runner here for the Alton Lady Redbirds, and that will bring in Sophia Hanneken, the shortstop. 
Hanneken on the year looking for her first hit. And there's a bunt in front of home plate. Thomas picks it up, and she's going to eat it. No throw over to first base. Hmm. Might have had a chance. At least got to maybe, you know, if you're on the side of not making a bad throw and rushing it, get yourself in a worse jam, but might have had a chance. Might have. So runners at first and second, two away, and the number nine batter in the order is Caitlin Brawley. And Brawley also looking for her first hit. She has received one walk on the year, just like Hannikin. Hannikin's must have been with the bases loaded because she does have an RBI. And Brawley does not. Only three stolen bases on the year for Alton. They have not been caught any at all. Collinsville has turned two double plays this year. Don't need that here, just need a single out. Yeah, already got two outs, so surprising to see the bunt for the last batter, but Thomas comes right back here, gets ahead 0-2. Grace Presley, the leadoff batter for Alton, waits on deck, and there is strike three called, and <laughs> Brawley knew it. She started walking away from home plate just as soon as uh, that pitch crossed home plate. She didn't even wait for the umpire to say anything. It's much like how Mode struck out in the first. Yeah. So another hit and another runner stranded. That's two hits and two runners stranded for Alton so far as we head now to the home half of the second inning. And Collinsville is still in front as we go to the bottom of inning number two right after we take a timeout here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Looking for a great place to watch the game with your crew? Look no further than the Lucky Fox Sports Bar in Uptown Collinsville. The Lucky Fox shows Collinsville Kayhawk sports on the big screen. Plus, UFC fights, boxing, Cardinals and Blues, and all of the NFL games with the NFL ticket and enough TVs, you'll be sure to find the game you want. And the food? How about Taco Tuesdays, Wing Wednesdays, plus burgers and sandwiches, pizza, steak, and more, including great drink specials and the coldest beer in town. Plus, they have an in-house DJ on Friday and Saturday nights. Dine in and catch a game or order carry out with the Lucky Fox. The Lucky Fox Sports Bar. 118 East Main Street in Uptown Collinsville. Open daily at 11 a.m. Check out the Lucky Fox Facebook page for daily specials. The Lucky Fox, 618. Back here at the Collinsville Sports Complex, Todd Duke is my name. On the other microphone is Chris Kettler. Still one to nothing over at Gibney. As Father McGivney put up 19 runs in the first inning yesterday. What was that final, 24 to three? Uh, 25 to four. 25 to four. And Alexi Rafalowski, Vila of the left fielder, Morgan Plummer. And Vila with that speed is on her way to second base and the throw to third is going to go into the fence. That's some heads up base running right there, man. Well, she, well, she ran through the top <laughs> she side. She did. <laughs> Kept going, got lucky there. Third baseman didn't handle it. But you can say she reached on the air because it yep. oh, bounced yeah. off the left fielder's glove. So doesn't get that first hit yet. Nope. But puts, sets the chaos up just nice here to maybe get another run across this. Emma Hilton comes up. Emma Hilton from the left side. Comes in batting 158 with one RBI. This is a chance for her to pick up RBI number two. Third baseman Meadow Gray is way in down the yeah. third baseline. She got burned twice first yep. inning. And that's why. Here's the pitch and a bunt that's going to be foul and over the Hawks dugout down the third base side. So Vila. Down at third base, just 60 feet away from making this a three to nothing game. And we'll have Hilton, Rafalowski, and Bardwell to get a chance to score that third run maybe. Barring some kind of freakish double play here. Presley pitches. That one's outside, called a strike. So 0 and 2 is the count to Emma Hilton. Third baseman will go back a step or two now with Two strikes, not expecting the bunt now. Hilton ready to go and takes one low and outside. She does not choke up on the bat at all, man. She's got her hands wrapped right around that handle. Right around the knob. Marlins uh, just got another run on a wild pitch. At least it's not a home run. Yep. Swing and a miss by Hilton. She goes down on strikes. That is the second strike out of the game for Presley and back to the top of the order we go. And Lexi Rafalowski who singled, stole second base and went to third on a wild pitch and then came home to score on a uh, ground out by Katie Bardwell. 
So we'll see what Rafalowski has up her sleeve. Again, Gray is way in down third base because Rafalowski burned her with a bunt to start off this game. Also got the second baseman about even with the pitcher. Yeah. To her left. This is when you just kind of swing away and pop one over that third baseman's head, right? Or over towards second base. Yep. And that yeah. one's going to get popped up, and it's going to land in go. the outfield just a little bit short. And Velip is going to score an RBI single by Alexi Rafalowski. That'll work. Infield so yeah, far top, in. Top Pop it up over their head there. Another run for the Chaos. Doing well here. Playing ahead here today. Something they haven't done much of yet this season. Here's Katie Bardwell, who grounded out to the first baseman, Savannah Russell, her first time up, but that scored Rafalowski from third base. And Lexi is one, or excuse me, two for two with a run scored and a run batted in. So my pregame guest, see, I tell my I have a pregame guest, they do good. Rafalowski looks like she wants to run again. She does. Pitches high and outside. Throw down to second base. It is not in time. Slid in right under the tag. And that was a good job by Lauren O'Neill trying to apply that tag, but she had to sweep around her body to get it over there, and she just missed. Yeah, it was, it was real close there. Rafalowski only been thrown out three times. But, uh, yeah, another pregame guest doing a good job. Is we had uh, Olivia Johnson the other day on the soccer game and yeah. scored a goal. Yeah. High and outside on that pitch as well. So 2-0. and The count to Katie Bardwell. Bailey Dimmick waits on deck. Presley. And a little bit of a jam again here in the second inning, just like she was in the first. Collinsville leads 3 to nothing. Looking for that second win of the year. Here is the pitch to Bardwell. It's up high. And 3-0 and to the Cahawks shortstop, Katie Bardwell. Ralph Velosky during the pregame interview said she likes playing defense better than offense. She loves tracking down those fly balls, she said. Here's the pitch to Bardwell. She's taken all the way, and she takes <laughs> ball four. She's she like, had to yeah, ask. Is that really? I was waiting, too, man. I'm like, okay, what's going on? Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. So we got Bailey Demick. Third walk issued by Presley. She came into this game only allowing seven walks in her first four games pitched. So she's in a little bit of a rut here as they have not played in a while. Six days ago was their last game. Yeah, well, it's been a week for the Chaos, too, because yeah. they didn't get to play East St. Louis. On Tuesday, that was their only, after playing Edwardsville on Thursday, they had the didn't have any games over the break, and uh, any St. Louis game, neither field could be was playable on Tuesday. These two teams have played each other pretty tight over the years. Alton, they uh, actually started their girls' softball program in 1977. Collinsville didn't start theirs until 10 years later in 1987. Teams met twice in that first season of 87. Collinsville won both. Seven to, nothing, seven to nothing in the first game and 15 to two in the second game. The Cahawks own the record though overall at 40 and 35 against Alton. 37 and 31 in the uh, regular season and Alton owns the record in the postseason as Alton has a four and three record in the playoffs against Collinsville. That pitch misses outside, one and oh the count to Bailey Dimmick who walked and came around to score later in that inning. The first inning when we scored two runs. Runners on at first and second. And strike. one out and a strike. She's way up there on the line there, but that pitch was close enough for a strike. And the 1-1 one, one pitch from Presley on the way, way outside, ball two. See if Bailey Dimmick can get something to hit here. Wind is blowing straight in, so it's going to be hard to uh, get a home run, especially to straightaway center field. That one's inside, and it's three and one now. Or they call that a strike? Yeah, just so okay. far. Two and two. Up along the line there, nearly hitting her, but yeah. these are strikes. <laughs> especially the zone he's had. Winds are uh, steady at around 15, but gusting up to 20, 25 miles per hour at times. Swinging a foul ball back to the screen. We'll do it all over again. Two and two remains the count. Two runners on, one out. Collinsville leads three to nothing. Demick digs back in from the left side. Addie Stone waits on deck. Rafalowski's at second base. Bardwell's at first. One away. Chance for Collinsville to add on to their three-nothing lead. Here's the pitch to Demick. Swing and a miss, and she's down on strikes. 
Went chasing a bad one there. She was swinging for the fences there too. That was a hefty swing. Really wanted to drive one there. Knew she was in a big RBI spot. Came through. And Edwardsville came with a big triple there, but not meant to be in this one. Addie Stone comes to the plate. She walked and was stranded at third in her first at bat, swinging a miss. And Presley trying to get out of this jam with only one run scored. Addie Stone would like a base hit, batting 176 coming into this game. And the pitch from Presley up high. Ball one, one ball, one strike to count. Two outs, two runners on. There are not very many fans here watching today. Yeah, I noticed that. I, I count about and uh, maybe about five or six on the Collinsville side. Might have a good amount of people sitting out there in the outfield watching from the car. Watching from the car, yeah. Probably got a couple of brave souls standing out there beyond the uh, left field fence. Hoodies on, jackets on, coats on. Two and one the count to Addie Stone. Here's the pitch from Presley. Mm. Swing and a miss, two and two. Deuces are wild. Two on, two outs, two to the count. Swung through. Man, oh man. Got one strike away from getting out of this one. And the pitch, swing and a miss. And down on strikes goes Addie Stone, and uh, Presley struck out the inning there, but Collinsville does get one more run across as they score that run on one base hit. Another error committed in the game for Alt would be a total of four for the game. We have a timeout coming your way. When we come back, top of the third inning is rolling right along, and we'll be back to tell you all about it next on the Cahawks Sports Network. Schaefer Excavating and Demolition in Pontoon Beach provides complete commercial, industrial, and residential demolition and excavating services. Schaefer Excavating and Demolition is family owned and operated by former Cahawks since 1980 and have over four decades serving the Metro East. Schaefer Excavating and Demolition is your choice for quality and experienced work at a reasonable price. Schaefer's just jobs of any size, whether digging for water and sewer lines, site preparation, or building demolition. Schaefer's can do it all. Schaefer's Excavating and Demolition also sells backfill, topsoil, loam, and other materials. Licensed, bonded, and insured. From earth moving and land clearing to building and demolition and road construction to septic and sewer system work. Call the experienced crew at Schaefer Excavating and Demolition. 618-931-6237. Back here at the Collinsville Sports Complex, Todd Duke and Chris Kettler are along with you as we move along to the top of the third inning and back to the top of the order for Alton. And Grace Presley will lead things off. She grounded out to Katie Bardwell her first time up as Marisha, Marissa Thomas is ready with the pitch. That's just a bit too far outside for the uh, wide strike zone by this umpire. Missed opportunity there for the Cahawks. Yeah. Had two on with... Demick and Stone coming up, three, four batters, and had one, already had one run in in the inning. Could have been bigger. Could have been. Hopefully that uh, doesn't come back to haunt them later. First two out of the strike zone to Grace Presley, the pitcher. Presley, Watsek, and Fisher here in the top of the third for Alton. Thomas trying to find the strike zone here. And in between these two teams took place back in 2003. Collinsville lost in the regionals that year, one to nothing to the Alton Redbirds. First playoff win by Collinsville over Alton. That was a regional semifinal, 11 to nothing. Wow. Same thing in 2011. Collinsville beat Alton 5 to nothing in the regional semifinal. Then they beat Edwardsville 3 to 2 in the regional championship game. That was the last regional championship for Collinsville. And the Cahawks ended up losing to O'Fallon. 7-2 in the sectional semifinal. Neither one of these two schools. Uh, both of them have three regional championships and nothing more than that. Here's the 2-2 pitch, and that one is just missed. Full count now to Grace Presley. Yeah, you're not going to get much high, I think, from this, this umpire. I said it already. Yep. Got to bring it down a little lower. And the full count pitch outside and a called strike. Takes a while for this umpire to make his strike called. Well, we can't hear him, so maybe no. he's a little more vocal 
we're up here and we got headsets on, so we don't don't know him and Demick are talking over what the pitches were, and she's learning how to maybe help her pitcher as we go along here. But they got the out, they got the strikeout. Jordan Watt. now to Carson Mode. Nope, not going to happen because it pops out of the glove of Keegan Edwards. That was a low throw. Edwards tried the backhand, but that's going to go down as an error. And Watsik reaches base. The throw on the run as the ball was tailing away from Mode. Good, good job of chasing it down. Just couldn't get the throw we needed. Collinsville commits their 28th error of the year. Those have been some problems. Yeah. Some of these games. And the next batter looks at a called strike on the inside corner. That is Lacey Fisher, who had the first single of this game. That came with two outs in the first inning, and she was stranded at first base after that. So Fulton's looking to run here. Pitch by Thomas. One strike to count to Lacey Fisher. One out. Okay, Alex, as I mentioned earlier, have turned two double plays on the year. This would be a good spot for one, but instead it's going to be a single. And that's going to take a roll all the way out to Vila. And first and second with one out as the Alton Lady Redbirds pick up their third hit. And that will bring up Lauren O'Neill, the cleanup hitter. And O'Neill had a foul pop up that was taken care of by Bailey Demick back in the first inning to end that. But did enough to poke it out to left field for the hit. Now we got shoe problems and glove problems, and now she's ready to go. Keegan Edwards is sneaking all the way in on first base, trying to prevent the bunt. And the pitch swinging a pop foul. That's going to drop down in the field of play, but Bardwell couldn't get there in time all the way from shortstop. She was on her horse trying to get to it. She was. That one's back on April the 10th of last year, and on May the 2nd, Collinsville lost here 5 to nothing. 0-1 pitch on the way, swing and a miss, and quickly it is 0-2. Baseball team's falling behind 4-0 against Staunton in the second, so we have to get some runs here today. It's yeah. tough playing baseball in the cold. Swinging a foul ball back to the screen will keep the count at 0-2. I know when I played baseball, I didn't enjoy playing in the cold. I don't enjoy much of anything in the cold. <laughs> Field and infield the infield fly. fly rule will be in effect as Bardwell makes the catch anyway. So two away. Runners weren't going to try to go anywhere anyway. Hustle play there from Bardwell to make the catch that she didn't really have to. Savannah Russell, the first baseman, struck out to start off the second inning. So she bats now with two outs and runners on first and second. Thomas looks into Demick. Demick looks over at her bench for the sign, has it, relays it, and Thomas is ready to pitch outside. Thomas has issued one walk and a couple of strikeouts. Ball's behind Savannah Russell here. Here's the 1-0. That one's outside as well. Thomas in the circle, ready to go again. Here comes the 2-0 pitch. That one's outside as well. All three of them have been outside. Too far outside for this umpire to call a strike. And Thomas has the sign from Demick. Rocks and pitches, and all four pitches were outside. And a four-pitch walk by Thomas has loaded the bases. Well, it's two outs. Just get this batter. Bases full of Redbirds. And here is Morgan Plummer. Plummer with a foul pop-up as well. That was taken care of by Carson Mode. And Collinsville wanting to get out of this with no run scored. Here's the pitch. That one's inside, but a called strike. <laughs> Just when she brings it down a bit, he's going to call it a strike. So Thomas trying to get out of this inning with no run scored. Here's the next pitch, swinging a shot right past Mode, 
And the throw over to mode from Bardwell after Bardwell ranged over to her right. Was not in time, so the run scores. As Jordan Watsick comes in to score on an RBI fielder's choice by Plummer, so the bases remain loaded. Luckily it didn't get it out of the infield there. Bardwell backing it up. Saved the second run from coming in. So land yet. We'll see what she can do. She looks at a strike. Bases are still full of Redbirds. Collinsville now up 3-1. to one. As Thomas is looking to get out of this inning with just the one run scored. Here's the next pitch. Swing and a slow roller to Mode. She'll pick it up and glove over to first base in time for the out. So the inning does come to a close. But one run does come across the plate off of just one base hit. And there was an error committed as well. And three runners left on base. That's five stranded base runners now for the Alton Lady Redbirds as we head to the bottom half of the third. And we'll be all back to tell you about it. And the next Kayhawks at bat will be coming your way after a commercial timeout here on the Kayhawks Sports Network. Got vinyl? Rich's Record Emporium in Uptown Collinsville can take care of all of your vinyl needs and more. You can peruse through thousands of records, from country to hard-to-find jazz, and classic rock is always in stock at Richard's Record Emporium. Used vinyl, new vinyl, and hard-to-find vinyl. Don't forget to check out the audio room at Rich's, where you can check out the latest in audio gear, from new top-of-the-line speakers to turntables and receivers, plus all of the accessories. Rich's has t-shirts, record cleaners, turntable needles, wall art, and so much more. If you can't find what you're looking for at Rich's, they will do their best to find it for you. Don't forget to mention seeing this ad on the Kayhawk Sports Network for a 10% discount at checkout. Rich's Record Emporium, 131 West Main Street in Collinsville, or call 618-795-1333 or online at richesrecordemporium.com. Once again, we welcome you back here to the Collinsville Sports Complex. Todd Duke, Chris Kettler back with you. Faith Fairchild, Keegan Edwards, and Carson Mode will have a chance to bat here in the bottom of the third for Collinsville. Kayhawks are up three to one. Faith Fairchild singled in a run in her first at bat back in that two run first inning. She faces Grace Presley and the lefty pitches. Swing and a shot foul down the third base side. Look at the lights coming on here. Probably need them. These clouds just will not get out of here. I know that it's on the way. You can probably see a little bit of uh, lighter skies if you look out to the west. Apparently it's been sunny all day down in the Rolla area. But these clouds have been stubborn as this low pressure system has taken its time moving east. Ooh, that one's that one's way short and way outside. One ball, one strike, the count to Faith Fairchild. That one had no chance out the hand. Straight down into the dirt. Presley, the one one pitch. High. Ball two. Presley, the lefty, looks in for her sign from Fisher, has it, and that one's low and outside. Three and one the count now to Faith Fairchild. Presley came into this game with only seven walks given up. She's walked three already in this game, in jeopardy of walking number four here. Pitch right down the middle. Not good with that pitch. Yep. Full count. Got to look to, for some, to drive some here. Don't just hope for a walk. Yep, and a pop-up. That's going to be in foul territory. Fisher behind the plate will take it. Well, at least she was swinging the bat, trying to make something happen, Pick but didn't do anything with that pitch. So a foul pop-up. Uh, counts are out number one. Here is Keegan Edwards, who flew out to the right fielder, Caitlin Brawley, in her only at bat thus far. Edwards, the first baseman, digs in from the right side against the lefty, Grace Presley. And the pitch from Presley on the way. High and outside, ball one. Carson Mode waits on deck. Bases empty, one out, 3-1 in favor of Collinsville. And the pitch, swing and a miss. Swung right through that one. That was a good cut. Nice, even swing there by Edwards. Edwards. 
Edwards a sophomore. And the pitch is inside from Grace Presley, a senior who, when she's not pitching, plays the outfield. Field is the other one. There's a swing and a fly ball that's going to go out of play. Back over uh, behind the fence on the JV field, where I already see there is one softball sitting over there. Don't seem like anybody from home is trying to get the balls. No, you figure some of those fans would take the run over there just to warm up a little bit. A little mm -hmm. nice leisurely jog. But yeah, now two strike count here. Two and two the count, one out, base is empty. Edwards will call timeout at home plate. Wind still whipping around, man. You can see those flags flying around out there at center field. First base umpire's pants are just <laughs> looks like he's caught in a wind tunnel. That wind started kicking up two days ago and hasn't let up much. Yeah, well, that soccer game we did Tuesday night from Kayhawk Stadium was super windy. Like 45, 50 mile an hour winds. Count remains two and two after the foul and the pitch and another foul ball out of play. Putting some nice swings together, protecting with two strikes. Edwards trying to get on base here, get something going here in the third. And another 2-2 delivery on the way. Swinging another foul ball out of play. The wind will take that one out. They have a whole mess of balls over there behind yeah. the fence that nobody's going to get. And they have a whole collection of them over there. Now the umpire is uh, asking if somebody threw one back in. But there's still a couple more over there. Now we got somebody out there there in his hands. And the one got thrown in. Well, there's four yeah. balls over there still. Okay. Another 2-2 pitch on the way from Presley to Edwards. Here it is. And... Mm -hmm. Ooh, boy. Yeah, rung her up. She's out. I didn't, he didn't even make a hand gesture that time. Not, not much of one. He did make a small one, but I think it needs to just maybe a little more audible, and we're just not, we're not getting it up here. Four strikeouts in this game for Presley, and Carson Mode is one of those. She got caught looking at a call. Looking for her first one, two, three inning as that pitch stays high. Ball one. No games in the books for us tomorrow on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Next in action, Saturday afternoon against Springfield Sacred Heart Griffin. Some baseball action from Fletcher Field in the strikeout cancer game, the pink out game. Varsity will play after the JV team plays at 11 o'clock. We'll be there for the varsity contest. Presley, 2-0 pitch is in there for a called strike. Yeah, it's kind of like a basketball with JV first and then varsity. Yeah. But let the JV also be a part of it in the cancer awareness game. And there's another strike. So we go from 2-0 oh to 2-2. Two and two. Alex Paz will be honored at that game Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon. I'm guessing in between games is when that's going to take place. That one's low and inside. Full count now to Carson Mode with Ali Vilaf waiting on deck. I think Presley throws some pitches here this inning. That they have. I don't know if anybody's going to get on. Could might be a one, two, three inning if she gets out here and shaking her hand. Yeah, probably cold. Trying to get the feeling back in it. Here's the three-two pitch, and that one is a called strike three. So Mode, for the second time, gets caught looking at strike three, and that is a one, two, three inning against Collinsville by Grace Presley. We will head to the top of the fourth inning. Collinsville still out front, though, by a score of 3-1. to one. And we're back to tell you all about the new inning after we take a timeout here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Herald Square and Cold Herald, two great additions to the Collinsville landscape. Next to the old Herald Brewery and Distillery, Herald Square is a new outdoor multi-use event space in Collinsville. Concerts, fun and games, farmer markets, and so much more. Herald Square, a great space for Collinsville's future. And, just off the square's turf, Cold Herald, old-fashioned scooped ice cream, gelato, house-made recipes, and premium sourced product. If you're over 21, ask about the good stuff at Cold Herald. Watch Collinsville grow. Herald Square and Cold Herald, two great new additions, only in Collinsville, Illinois. Bikes Automotive in Collinsville is a T3 certified tire dealer and so much more. 
Sure, Mike's Automotive has tires. They can also help with making sure your entire vehicle is road ready. From belts and hoses to preventative maintenance like oil changes and tire rotation. Plus a lot more than that. Mike's Automotive has three locations to choose from. Mike's Automotive in St. Louis and Milstadt and Mike's Automotive in Collinsville at 1150 St. Louis Road, just blocks from the high school. Or call Mike's Automotive at 618-345-0611. Mike's Automotive in Collinsville. Marissa Thomas is back in the circle as we begin inning number four. Yep, let me put that on the scoreboard here. Yep. Yeah, I got to put that on my scoreboard too. Foul ball down the third base side. As Thomas faces the bottom of the order, Sophia Henneken and Caitlin Brawley. Then back to the top of the order in Grace Presley. Henneken singled and was stranded in the second. Thomas with the 0-1 delivery Ooh. way outside. I think she lost that in the step as she stepped off. That made her low off throwing the ball. And cold. Could not be fun. Big 12-inch softball. It's a big ball, too, to yep. have to make sure you grip your whole hand around it. Swinging a foul ball over the press box. I hate it when I look at my phone and see that spinning wheel. Might be just my phone that didn't connect, but eh, that looks okay. By the, time you, by the time it comes on your phone, it might be okay on the computer. Yeah. Always bothers me when I see the spinning wheel, though. Three and two now the count after that high pitch to Sophia Hanneken. Shortstop for Alton. Some of these pitchers have been going into long counts, too. This yes, is they have. One. Yep. Swinging a foul ball. That's mm. off of the helmet of Demick behind home plate. Did bring the space heater into the booth today. Makes it feel a little better. Tried to keep the windows closed, but the hot spot started acting up, so I had to open the window and set the hot spot up there. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. There Swing and a miss by Hennigan. Next up, right Job. The strikeout pitch there by uh, Thomas coming back, getting the strikeout. And Third strikeout of the game for Marissa Thomas, and that will bring up Caitlin Brawley. Brawley was a strikeout victim. She got caught looking at the called third strike to end the second inning. Thomas had two strikeouts in that inning. Maybe she can do that here again in this one. Here's the pitch, and that's inside. Oh, weird. Yeah, that wouldn't have felt good. Cold hands getting hit by a softball. I don't think that would count as a hit by pitch. No. Grab the ball. And that pitch is in there for a called strike. That had uh, Brawley backing off the plate again. One ball, one strike to count. One out, no one on. We're in the top of the fourth, three to one in favor of Collinsville. Calc's got two runs in the first, one in the second. Alton picked up their lone run in the top of the third. And a one-one pitch on the way, and that one is in there for a called strike as well. Thomas looking for her first one, two, three, and go. Back to the top of the order in Grace Presley. And a Ooh. swing and a miss, and down on strikes goes Brawley. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Thomas. That gives her four on the afternoon. And here is Grace Presley, who struck out her own self. That's actually the fifth strikeout for Thomas. You got Presley looking. Kalex did have to make a throw down there. Dimmick didn't come up with it cleanly, but no problems there. Presley let off with a ground out and then let off the third inning with a strikeout. Now she's up there with two away. And the pitch is a little high, ball one. Thomas, pitches, high again. Bring it down, he'll call him a strike. Yeah, that's, that's what it's been, if these pitchers have been missing, they've all been high. 2-0 pitch on the way. That one's just a little bit too far inside, so 3-0. and Thomas almost had a 1-2-3 inning in the second inning. Got the first two outs, and then a four-pitch walk to Lambiot. 
trying not to do that here to Presley, and that one is a called strike on the outside corner. So now one of those back, three and one the count to Grace Presley. Thomas brings it again, and a foul ball out of play, so one pitch away from that one, two, three inning that I was talking about. Flag at center field at half staff. It's blowing straight in, and a pop-up, and this one is going to be in foul territory and off the fence right before Faith Fairchild could get there, so staying alive is Grace Presley just barely. Might have been able to get there, but she was kind of stuck behind Edwards, who was chasing yeah. it down first, and then Edwards realized she didn't have the run on it there, and if that wind wasn't blowing the direction it is and blowing as strong as it is, that's probably an out. Yeah, it might have been more of an easier pop-up out for Edwards to get. Swing and a foul chopper. Over in front of the Cahawks dugout will keep the count at three and two. So Presley hanging tough. Hanging tough. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> it's new kids on the block. I know, just seeing if you knew. Oh, yeah. Another 3-2 pitch. Swing and a shot right up the middle. So Presley battles, battles, and battles and gets a base hit out of the deal. Fourth hit of the afternoon by Alton. And no 1-2-3 inning is this time around as well. And that will bring up Jordan Watsick, the center fielder, who has grounded out, reached on an error, and she has scored the only Alton run here in this game. Like the baseball team's broken through there. We're down now 4-2 to two in the third. Okay. Thomas ready with a pitch, and Watsik, she'll line it down the first baseline, but foul. Von Herrera singles in the bottom of the seventh. Paul Goldschmidt scores. Marlins are still up, though, at Bush Stadium, and the home opener there, 5-4. to four. Can't believe the Marlins came into this contest today 0-7. Oh Skip Schumacher's team made the playoffs last year. Kind of shocked at that 0-7 oh start. Here's the 0-1, and that one's a little inside, 1-1. One one. At home, too. They were at home for the first time, Pirates and yeah. Angels. Yeah, the Pirates started off 5-0 and before they finally lost a game. We hear what Thomas come back with here, this 1-1. One one. And here is the 1-1, one one mm. and it stays inside, 2-1. and one. Catcher, Lacey Fisher on deck. Tried to bust her inside, knew Kept it too far outside. Thomas trying to get out of this inning with no damage done. Swinging mm -hmm. a foul ball off the top of the screen here. That'll even the count at two and two. Runner on first, two outs. Collinsville out front, three to one. Some dude down here has got a pineapple blanket wrapped around his shoulders. <laughs> Here's the pitch. Ooh, swinging a little shot back to Marissa Thomas over to first base for out number three. One three on the put out, and the inning comes to a close. No runs and one base hit. No errors committed in the inning. One more runner left on base. Six base runners left on base here so far this afternoon for Alton, and we head to the bottom half of the fourth inning. Collinsville coming to the plate, see if they can add on to this lead. Right now it's three to one in favor of the Cahawks and we'll be back to tell you all about the next half inning in just a moment here on the Cahawks Sports Network. First National Bank of Waterloo, with over 100 years serving the Metro East. Visit First National Bank of Waterloo at their Maryville or Collinsville locations for all of your banking, mortgage, and lending needs. Why? Super low closing costs, low construction loan rates, and they do so much to support our local communities. When you need a loan, call the Collinsville team at First National Bank of Waterloo at 618-345-1121 or visit their Maryville or Collinsville locations or online at fnbwaterloo.bank. First National Bank of Waterloo, member FDIC and equal housing lender. PacMail of Collinsville, locally owned and operated by Ryan Combs. PacMail can ship anything, anywhere. 
Make sure you like a neighbor because, well, you are a neighbor. PacMail offers shipping materials and containers, private mailboxes, as well as climate-controlled self-storage. Visit PacMail at 407 Beltline Road in Collinsville. Online at WeShipStLouis.com or call PacMail at 346-4884. Your home is where you feel happy, safe, and secure. So if you see signs of foundation problems like cracks or uneven floors, worrying is natural and getting it fixed is crucial. Woods Basement Systems understands. We've been solving foundation worries since 1986. Woods experts have the training and equipment. basement experts. Call or go to woodsbasementsystems.com today. Merkel pitches one in the dirt. And Vila. Uh, head in the count already. Vila reached on an error and scored the only run in the second inning. That was the third run by Collinsville. Looking to get her that first hit. Couldn't. Ooh, that one yeah. just sticks the bat out and fouls it off. Nolan Gorman doubled in the bottom of the seventh. Two-run score. Cardinals have their first lead of the day at 6-5 to five over the Marlins. And that one's right down the middle. Baseball Chaos have tied it, 4-4 four, four in the third. Well, that's good. One ball, two strikes to count to Ali Vilaf, and here's the pitch. That yep. one is in there for a called strike three. That is three strikeouts in a row going back to the Don't last two the in the last one. inning, and all three looking. She's got a few of them looking. Yeah, she's got uh, three looking and two swinging of her five strikeouts, does Grace Presley. That'll bring up Emma Hilton, who was a strikeout victim herself back in the second inning. Oh, Winfield stepping in a bit here. On this. Actually, that's seven strikeouts. Hilton swings away that one, misses everything. Even the infield, outfield coming in a couple steps. The 0 one pitch outside, ball one, one and one. So uh, Cahawks are leading here. Cahawks have tied things up over at Fletcher Field, and the Cardinals have taken a lead at Bush Stadium. Things are heading in the right direction. 1-1 one, one pitch, swinging a slap right mm. off of the glove of the third baseman. That was in foul territory, but, man, Meadow Gray, I think, should have had that. Nice little late slap at it there by Hilton. Nearly got it up overhead. Lexi Wapolowski, the leadoff hitter for Collinsville, waits on deck. Presley pitches, swing and a miss by Hilton. Tried that same thing again, but she took a step toward first base. Here is Lexi Wapolowski. That is the eighth strikeout for Presley Wapolowski. Two for two on the afternoon with a run scored and a run batted in and two stolen bases. Gray comes in from third expecting to bunt, as does Lauren O'Neill, the second baseman. Wafalowski, the lefty. Lefty versus lefty here. Here's the pitch outside, ball one. Last time, Wafalowski just sailed it up over the third shortstop's head. Yeah. Playing in. Everybody's playing in. Yeah, they're playing even more in than they did on Hilton. Yeah. And uh, Rafalowski in an 0-2 hole. Two outs. Bardwell waits on deck. Rafalowski trying to get on ahead of her. Presley pitches. Swing and a miss, and she struck out the side. That is... The eighth strikeout, or excuse me, the ninth strikeout on the afternoon for Presley. She struck out the side here in the fourth inning, and if you go back to last inning, that is five strikeouts in a row for Presley. We head now to the top of the fifth inning. Score remains the same, three to one in favor of Collinsville, and we're back to tell you about the brand new inning after we take a timeout here on the Cahawk Sports Network. Lakeside Roofing in Collinsville. Let the professionals at Lakeside Roofing protect your most important investment, your home or business. Have the elements taken a toll on your roof system? Notice a leaking roof? Maybe it's time for a free roof inspection. 
Regular maintenance can extend the life of your roofing system by 10 years or more. Lakeside Roofing is your winning team for commercial and residential roofing systems. Lakeside All-Star Professionals have installed, repaired, and maintained hundreds of roofs on both sides of the river. Call Lakeside Roofing today at 618-344-2800 in Collinsville or 314-241-5253 or online at lakesideroofing.com. Choose experience, choose Lakeside. Chapman Trucking, LLC. Chapman Trucking is a local Collinsville business owned and operated by 1994 Collinsville graduate Christy Chapman. With over 10 years of experience, Chapman Trucking LLC can take care of all of the heavy lifting when it comes to hauling aggregate materials such as sand, driveway rock, dirt, boulders, and more. That includes getting your heavy work equipment to your work site where it needs to be. Give Christy a call for a free estimate at Chapman Trucking LLC, 618-960-9346 or online at Chapman Trucking LLC.net. Alton catcher Lacey Fisher leads things off here in the top of the fifth. Marissa Thomas back out in the circle. And the next pitch, swing and a miss. We're in the top of the fifth inning. Collinsville two runs in the first, one in the second. Alton got their lone run in the third. That's where we stand right now. Fisher has singled twice but was stranded both times. Pop fly and Vilaf is underneath it and has it for the out in left field. And that's how we get started here in this fifth inning. One away for Lauren O'Neill, who has popped up twice here in this game. Once in foul territory that was handled by Bailey Dimmick and the other pop up on the infield handled by Katie Bardwell. They move, moved uh, Vilaf into left for this game. She does a good job making that simple catch. And the pitch, and that one's going to be a little bit of trouble. That one's going to drop down in no man's land. Hilton gets there first, and we'll throw into second and keep Lauren O'Neill at first. Bermuda Triangle there between yep. center right and Fairchild second baseman. No one's going to get that one. So a runner on at first base and one away for Savannah Russell. Russell has walked and struck out in this game. Hawks looking for the double play ball on the infield. Thomas, the righty, works to the lefty. Swing and a miss. Savannah Russell, the first baseman for Alton. Come down here and get some instruction from the coach. See what she's got for some after one pitch here, talking to his batter. Trying to uh, fix her swing, it looks like. The way she dropped the bat down. On that last one, it's going to stick with her. Not going to take her out or anything. Collinsville back at it tomorrow with a road game at Bree Central. Next up for Alton is a Saturday morning game against Piasaw Southwestern. Here's the 0-1 and a pop-up on the infield. And Faith Fairchild handles that one for out number two. Next up, left fielder number 19, Morgan. Runner on first wasn't going anywhere, so disaster would have happened, and Fairchild didn't come with that cleanly. Might have been able to make the throw over to second, get the out anyway, but it works out. That will bring up Morgan Plummer. Plummer, a foul pop-up that Carson Mode handled, and then she reached on a fielder's choice in the third, but was stranded at first base. Thomas is ready with the pitch. It's inside and high. Ball one. Hopefully a little warmer for the Cowboys tomorrow over in Breeze. Yeah, let's hope. It is some, supposed to be a little bit warmer. I know we're supposed to get some sunshine. That always helps. You get some Wallies or something after. after yeah, there you go. Good old Wally burger. One ball, one strike to count. Runner on first base, two outs. And Thomas ready with the 1-1 one, one delivery. Popped up, and that one's going to get out of play. I was waiting for the thud on top of the uh, press box here, but I'm guessing the wind blew it a little farther than that. Hopefully no, nobody's car. Yeah, but hopefully. Two strike now. One and two the count. Five strikeouts on the afternoon for Thomas. Do we have six? Nope, just a bit outside. Two and two. Just a bit too high. Once again. Let's see if this is the pitch. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Popped up. 
This one's going to be in foul territory. Carson Mode is on the run, and she has it in foul territory once again. Second time this afternoon that Carson Mode has handled a foul ball pop-up. And Collinsville stays away from the uh, run score in this inning on the one hit. And that runner was stranded on base. And that now is seven base runners stranded for the Alton Lady Redbirds as we head to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Collinsville coming to the plate. And we'll tell you all about the next Hawks at bat after we take a timeout here on the Hawks Sports Network. Keep your ride shiny and clean with Extreme Details Vehicle Detailing in Collinsville. Owner Jay Merkel and his crew at Extreme Details believe in the value of community and in helping their community hold the value of their vehicles with a sharp-looking, clean ride that you and your community can be proud of. Extreme Details can handle any job, whether you drive a small car, an SUV, or even a bus or RV. No job is too big or too small at Extreme Details. Extreme Details offers scratch and oxidation removal. No matter what you drive, cars, trucks, motorcycles, boats, and more. Plus, Extreme Details can handle fleet vehicles for you and your company. Call Jay and the gang at Extreme Details at 618-977-1224. Check for periodic specials on the Extreme Details Facebook page. Put the shine in your ride with Extreme Details, 618-977-1224. Is the two, three, and four hitters here in the bottom half of the fifth for Collinsville. That would be Katie Bardwell, Bailey Dimmick, and Addie Stone. We'll see if we can get some more offense going here for these Lady Chaos. Collinsville leads three to one. They'd like to make it a little bit more. Grace Presley back out in the circle. She's ready to go. And the pitch to Bardwell. Swing and a slow roller to the third baseman, Gray. She's up with it and throws in time for out number one, and one pitch equals one out. Next up, catcher number four. Get off the end of the bat, didn't go too far. Easy one for the third baseman to get. That'll bring up Bailey Demick. Demick, the leading hitter for Collinsville, looking for her first hit in this game. She has walked and scored and struck out in this game. Demick, the lefty. Against the lefty, Presley. Here's the pitch. That one's low. Ball one. Big gap out in left center field. If Demick can get a hold of one, she can run around the bases for a while. And the pitch. Outside and low once again. 2-0. Demick in the driver's seat as far as the count goes. Presley, she's behind 2-0. Here's the pitch inside this time, but a called strike. Every time on her, they're going to call that a strike. Yeah, she stands up close to that line, closest to home plate. Now Presley oh. wants to do a little landscaping out there. Just kicking the dirt around. She's ready to go. And the 2-1 pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Better chasing that one. Way outside the zone. Got to protect though. Sometimes like this wide zone. I was going to call out a strike, but that one was way out there. Two and two the count to Bailey Demick. Addie Stone waits on deck. Presley rocks back and brings it. And a foul ball out of play off the bat of Bailey Demick. Baseball team on the road tomorrow at Triad. Saw the Lady Chaos soccer team added a couple more games onto their schedule. 2-2 pitch to Dimmick and a swing and a miss. And that's back-to-back -back at bats that Dimmick has struck out. And that'll bring up Addie Stone. That is the 10th strikeout of the day for Presley. Stone was one of those in her last at bat. Her first at bat, she walked and was stranded at third base. Presley walked a few. We were surprised too, seeing she had seven, but she's come back with the strikeouts. Yeah, came into this game with 47 strikeouts. Now she's up to 57. High, Chaos, all one. Chaos were racking off the strikeouts last game last week. Yeah, 
More of those today. Presley pitches. Stone fouls it away. One and one. Almost 6 o'clock. My stomach's growling. Getting late in this game, though. We are in the bottom of the fifth. And that one is a little low and inside, two and one. A couple more fans have shown up here and braved the conditions. Two and one the count to Addie Stone. Here's the pitch and swing and a miss, and it's now two and two. Set up for another strikeout. Sure is. Stone can't put the bat on this, get in play. Stone had a couple of walks in that first inning. One of them came around to score. That one's low and inside. Full count now to Addie Stone. Stone was the one that received the walk that didn't score. Demick walked in that first inning and did come around to score. Here's the 3-2 pitch. High, ball four. And Addie Stone walks for the second time here in this game. Next up, second baseman number Fourth walk Faith issued Faith. by Grace Presley, and that'll bring up Faith Fairchild. Fairchild, an RBI single in that first inning, and a pop-up in foul territory that the catcher Lacey Fisher handled in her last at bat. Pitch high, ball one. Addie Stone does have three stolen bases on the year. Highly doubt that she's running here with two outs. Yeah, not with two outs. Swing and a miss. Tracy just can't move her along here. Not take the bat out of Fairchild's hands. Let's see if Fairchild can do something with it. One the one the count to the Cahawks second baseman, Faith Fairchild. And here's the pitch. Pop foul out of play. And we'll do it all over again. Except this time it's a one ball, two strike count to Faith Fairchild. Presley. She's ready with the one two pitch and another foul. This one stays in the field of play, though, as it hits off the top of the backstop here. Count remains one and two. Two outs. Runner at first base is Addie Stone. Collinsville leading three to one. We're in the home half of the fifth inning. Presley steps back in the circle and rocks and brings it. High, ball two, two and two. I think it's coming next week. Pitch, swing and a miss. Swung through that one. Down on strikes goes Fairchild, the 11th strikeout of this game for Grace Presley. And she's racking up the strikeouts, that's for sure. We head next inning is what we have coming up for you next here on the Cahawks Sports Network. Lottie's Cafe, Collinsville's hidden gem. Lottie's Cafe offers food, cocktails, and gaming in a great atmosphere highlighted by fast and friendly service. Lottie's Cafe also offers a unique menu that features soups and salads, sandwiches and paninis, pizza and flatbreads, appetizers and desserts, as well as breakfast. That's right, we said breakfast. Unique breakfast items such as a breakfast stromboli, a breakfast BLT, and breakfast burritos. Lottie's also offers creative cocktails, a wine bar, the coldest beer around, and a video gaming area for those 21 and older. And don't forget the Lottie's Cafe gift certificates. Lottie's Cafe, Collinsville's hidden gem. Check them out online at Lottie'sCafe.com, on Facebook, or in person in the strip next to the Walmart Neighborhood Market. Or call Lottie's Cafe at 618-223-8256. Lottie's Cafe, Collinsville's hidden gem. Nitty gritty, last couple of innings, maybe, hopefully. Sixth inning is where we are, swing and a miss by the designated player, Josie Landyet, who has walked and grounded out. It'll be the bottom three in the order, Landyet. Hanneken and Brawley batting here for Alton in the top of the sixth. And the next pitch by Thomas is in there for a called strike. And Thomas quickly out in front of the 
Alton got to this game, and that one's high and outside, so we'll have to wait a little bit. Thomas moving right along here. And the pitch to land yet. Swinging a shot right back to Thomas. She gloves it. Throws over to first base in time. One out. Didn't take much. Get the, get the glove down. Didn't get past. Thomas makes easy throw. Second uh, ground ball out for Thomas here in this game today. And that will bring up the number eight hitter, Sophia Hannigan, who has singled and struck out. Thomas, ready to go, and the pitch in there for a called strike. How about a couple of one, two, three innings for Thomas and the Lady Cahawks on the defensive side of things. We can all go home happy. Here's the next pitch. That one is in there for a strike as well. So back-to-back -back batters that Thomas has started off 0-2. He's coming on strong here. Later this game gets. Thomas ready with the 0-2. Swinging a little pop fly, and Bardwell gets it on one hop and throws over to first base in time for the out. Edwards almost had her foot off the back. She had to reach back and make sure she touched it for the out. And had to be a little rushed as Bardwell was trying to make the catch and then had to adjust. That's and the uh, third put out by Bardwell today. This is some pinch hitter, but we'll never know who it is. Not a clue. We don't have. Wearing that uh, pullover hoodie, so we have no idea who the pinch hitter is. Of course, the uh, coaching staff isn't going to relay that information to us. And we're not going to guess. Swing and a miss. Brawley struck out both times she was up to the plate. As Thomas is looking for a one, two, three inning, a slow roller to Bardwell. She'll have to hurry, and it pops out of her glove just as she came up with it. Pretty sure that was going to be an infield single anyway. The only thing you could have hoped for there was maybe Thomas could have cut it off, but still would have been a tough throw from her. But no one through three inning. No nope. in sixth. Nope. Back to the top of the order, and Grace Presley. Presley is grounded out, struck out, and singled in this game. She's up there with two outs and a runner on first, and the pitch is in there for a called strike. <clears throat> Thomas trying to get out of this with no damage done. Here's the pitch. High, ball one, one and one. Another reason to be glad to get back to warm weather is so we can see jersey numbers. Yeah. 1-1 one, one pitch inside, ball two. I mean, it's as simple as not wearing them, but when you when you put jackets and stuff on, why, why do we have them at all? Yeah. Could have wore a regular old T-shirt underneath if you wanted to. Swinging another slow roller. Mode's going to take this one, and the throw over to first base is not in time. Ooh, real close, real close. Yep. Just a step Next there. Pinch, our pinch hitter legs that one out. Back-to-back -back singles. So the pinch hitter is at second. Grace Presley is at first, and that will bring up Jordan Watzik, the center fielder. Now we're going to have time called by Coach Schmidtling. She'll go out and talk things over with her pitcher and her infielders. Trying to get everybody just to calm down, make some plays. But, man, back-to-back, -back, really slow rolling balls through the infield. And neither when no one could make the play. Bardwell had it in her glove, but I don't think she would have been able to throw out the runner anyway by the time she got that ball in her glove. So right now, Alton's getting lucky with a couple of... Uh, yeah, you know, the ground's got to be a little little soft, so it's just going to slowly roll through that yeah. through that dirt after we've got some, some rain this week. A couple of little slow rollers off the end of the bat. Watsik has scored the only run here for Alton so far. Other than that, a couple of ground outs. 
pitch, Thomas. That's going to go down, and it's going to bounce in front of Hilton. And the throw is going to come into first base, not in time for the relay at home, and Alton scores their second run. And the Redbirds have runners at second and third as the pinch hitter comes in to score the second run of the game for the Alton Redbirds. And three base hits in a row, all coming with two outs. So they got the first run, we're all with all back with two with two outs. And now still more of a jam here is the one who got the hit. All moved all the way up to second, so second and third. And that will bring up Lacey Fisher. Fisher has two singles here this afternoon. And the eight base hits that Alton has. And it's a lot closer now, three to two. Thomas trying to get out of this inning with no further damage done. That's a foul ball down the third baseline. And that was well hit as well. Ralph Wolowski decided to put back on that sweatshirt. So now all the outfielders are wearing sweatshirts. Matter. Thomas trying to get out of this inning with the lead still intact. Here's the 0-1, and that one is in there for a called strike two. So Thomas one pitch away from getting out of this inning with just the one run scored. Next delivery from Thomas. On the way. Outside, ball one. Just don't want to miss, make a mistake here. Base hit will probably give Alton the lead. Thomas, a long look into Demick. She's ready to go. Here comes the one-two. Swing and a pop fly, and this one is going to be handled by Faith Fairchild. So Collinsville gets out of the inning with just the one run given up. But they have gotten a little closer, have the Alton Lady Redbirds. We will head now. To the home half of the sixth inning, it is three to two in favor of your Collinsville Lady Cahawks. And we'll be back to tell you all about the home half of the sixth inning in just a moment here on the Cahawks Sports Network. Todd Duke here, proud member of the Collinsville Educational Assistance Association. Whether you call us teacher's aides, paraprofessionals, or educational assistants, it all comes down to one thing, taking care of students. More importantly, your student. Yes, we are there for the teachers, and we help them in any way possible. But our goals are in line with our teachers in that we want to see our students succeed at not only being a student, but well beyond that as we ready them for the world outside of the classroom. We are union strong. We are Cahawk strong. We strive to help students reach... Looking to buy a new home or sell your current home? Trust the Blaylock Group of EXP Realty with all of your real estate needs. The real estate market is hot right now, and you can trust the years of experience the Blaylock Group brings to the table. The Blaylock Group can help you find your dream home, or they can help you get top dollar for your current home. Give Peyton or Emily Blaylock a call today at the Blaylock Group of EXP Realty, 618-780-4622. That's 618 780 4622, the Blaylock Group of EXP Realty. Top of the ninth over at Bush Stadium, and the Cardinals lead 8-5. to five, Trying to close out the home opener with a big old W. Lady Calx are trying to pick up their second win of the year. Right now they lead by a run. As we are in the bottom of the sixth inning, and leading things off here for Collinsville, Keegan Edwards. Edwards has struck out and she flew out to Caitlin Brawley way back in the first inning. It'll be Edwards, Mode, and Beleth. If anyone can get on, the number nine hitter and Emma Hilton will have a chance to bat. Here's the pitch from Presley. Swing and a pop fly that's going to get over the second baseman's head and fall in for a hit. So Keegan Edwards is on base. Maybe Collinsville can uh, get one of those runs back. That is just the fourth hit of the afternoon for Collinsville. And here comes Carson Mode, who has been caught looking at a called third strike in both of her at-bats here today. See if they look to just move the runner over here. Maybe sacrifice bunt. Might well, give her a pitch to try to run on, though. 
Gray is playing way in, and Mode wasn't about all that bunting. She swung away and lined a shot right over the Alton dugout down the first baseline. Too much for that. She's looking to hit. Yeah. Maybe she just went up there swinging at the first pitch to kind of get everybody to back up, but Gray at third base has not moved an inch. Here's the 0-1, and now a bunt. That's popped up in the air. It comes down. It spins, and the throw over to first base is in time for the out. That was close over at first base. Keegan Edwards moves down to second, so the sacrifice worked. Next up, left fielder number eight, Allie Vila. There is Allie Vila. Ball didn't spin enough or tail away from either of them. Yeah, just kind of stopped and spun in one spot. Here is Allie Vila, who has reached on an error. She scored the lone run in the second inning and was a strikeout victim back in the fourth when Presley struck out the side. And Gray still looking for a bunt down the third baseline. And that one's way over the head, off the back of the umpire as well. And that'll allow Keegan Edwards to move over to third base just 60 feet away from getting one of those runs back. Cardinals finish off the Marlins. That's nice. a winner. Nice, nice, nice. Eight five. Well, we'll write that one down as a passed ball because that was off of the catcher's glove, Fisher, and then it rolled down the backside of the umpire. So a runner at third, one out, 1-0 one -oh pitch on the way. Swing and a miss by Vila. She's just looking to put the ball in play. She puts the ball in play, and chances are the run scores. Yeah, sets up nice for the chaos, get the sacrifice, move her over to second, and then the pass the ball. Here's the 1-1, one, one, up high. Ball two, two and one. Vila reached on the air, maybe you could just put something in play here. Have a better chance of doing that than you would be striking out, that's for sure. Here's the 2-1 pitch, swinging a foul ball back to the screen, that'll even things out at two and two. Emma Hilton waits on deck. Vilaf would like to get this run home from third. That is Keegan Edwards, who's down at third. Rusley, back in the circle. 2-2 two -two pitch on the way. Strike three called on the inside corner. And Vilaf goes down looking at a called third strike for the second at bat in a row. So it's up now to Emma Hilton, who is 0 for 2 with both strikeouts. So two away, 12th strike out of the game for Presley. Presley. Ooh, right fielder comes way in. Yeah, that is Caitlin Brawley out there in right field. She's almost on the infield dirt, swinging a little pop foul that's going to get out of play into the stands. Oh, and one the count to Emma Hilton. Gray again playing way in from third base, as is Lauren O'Neill at second base. And Presley with the pitch, and that one's outside. Hilton needs to stay in that batter's box. She likes to uh, kind of get that running start down to first base while she slaps at that ball. One ball, one strike to count, and the pitch. Swinging a slow roller to the shortstop, Henneken. She throws over to first base, not in time, and the run scores, and Collinsville gets one of those runs back. Just put something in play. Slowly rolls through the infield like they've been playing all day. He's able to beat that one out. Big run there for the Chaos. Sure is. I like 4-2 a lot better than 3-2. Back to the top of the order, and Alexia Rafalowski with a runner on first base. Lexi on the afternoon has two singles, a run scored, and an RBI in her last at bat, though. She struck out in the fourth, that's when uh, Presley struck out the side. Hilton on at first, two away. Collinsville up four to two, and Rafalowski steps out. She asked for time, one step down, then come back in, and the catcher got up, and, and Rafalowski asked for time again and stepped out. And right back to the pitcher's mound it goes, or the pitcher's circle it goes, Presley. Throws over for the out, so 1-3 on the put out for out number three. But Collinsville does pick up one run on two base hits in that inning. No errors committed, and Collinsville leaves a runner on base. That's their fourth base runner that they have stranded today. But most important thing is, is that the Cahawks scored a run, 
And they get one of those two runs back they gave up in the home half of the sixth. We move now to the seventh inning. Collinsville just needs to get these Alton Lady Redbirds out. One, two, three. And we can call it a day. We'll be back to tell you all about the top of the seventh inning after we take a timeout here on the Cahawks Sports Network. Old Herald Brewery and Distillery in Collinsville produces their own spirits and beer on site right at the restaurant. Pair that with some of the most unique menu items around the entire metro area, and you can see why they are such a hit. They can handle you and your family, or they can handle you and your group. Throw in the occasional live entertainment, and you can see why Old Herald Brewery and Distillery is a must-stop destination in Collinsville. Old Herald Brewery and Distillery, 115 East Clay Street in Collinsville, 618-855-8027 or online at oldheraldbrewing.com. Collinsville High School alumni Stacy Lowenstein, CHS Class of 91, Lisa Bassetto, Sarah Sulky, and Tracy Limp, CHS Class of 94, Tony Geisen, CHS Class of 96, and Kevin Robinson, CHS Class of 99, want to wish all of our Cahawks a great year. We look forward to cheering you on and supporting you. Work hard on the court and the field, as well as in the classroom. Remember, once a Cahawk, always a Cahawk. Hashtag Cahawk family. Back here at the Collinsville Sports Complex, Todd Duke, Chris Kettler with you. It is the middle of the order here for the Alton Lady Redbirds. The four, five, and six hitters, Lauren O'Neill will lead things off and looks at one outside. O'Neill has popped up twice and singled once. First pop up in foul territory, handled by Dimmick. Second one was to Katie Bardwell. Her mode nor Bardwell could get there for that one. Well, all I'm going to need some base runners. Climb back in this one. They have, have sing single tallies in their innings. They've scored need at least two here. And the pitch from Thomas just a bit outside. Good job holding back. Not swinging at that one. Stayed high. So the Cahawks back out front by two. No base runners and a swing and a foul ball. That was inside, probably would have been ball three. Definitely would have been ball three. We almost was tailing in to maybe hit her. It's on deck. Pitch by Thomas on the way. Popped up and heading to foul territory and that one is that have been blown into uh, out of play territory. If it wasn't for that gusty win, we might have had more outs, and this game might have already been over. Had a few that they thought could have been caught. One out. Way out in front of that one. Big time. Six strikeout on the afternoon for Marissa Thomas. I believe, if my man had it written down. Yep, six strikeouts. And one hole. Thomas looks in. Has the sign from Demick. And pitches. And a shot right into the glove of Keegan Edwards at first base, and the Cahawks just need one more out to pick up their second win of the year. On the front of that one, all it, where Alton has scored their two runs today, yeah. both with two outs. There is Morgan Plummer, who has an RBI fielder's choice, a pop-up, two pop-ups in the foul territory land, both of them that were handled by Carson Mode at third. First one misses. Thomas looking for one more out. And she pitches, swing and a shot down the third base line, but that's foul. And we'll roll around in the uh, bullpen area for Collinsville, and that'll even the count at one and one. Josie Landiet waits on deck. We're hoping that her next at bat comes Saturday morning against Piasaw Southwestern. Baseball team was winning, right? Yeah, they're up six to four and six. Six to four in the sixth inning. We're in the seventh here. Swinging a little pop up right at front of home or pitcher's rubber and a bad throw by Thomas. I don't think she would have got her anyway. That ball had some spin going on and it kind of just uh, spun here. Lanya will go down and talk things over with Dan Carter, the head coach. Lanya. 
has walked in, grounded out twice. So Thomas has to bear down. Worry about the runner there. She not the winning run or anything like that. Just face the batter up. Got to throw some strikes. 1-0 with the count. Next pitch from Thomas on the way. Swing and a – oh, well, that should be an out, but it's going to be an out anyway. Collinsville wins. The runner going down to second base kind of ran right into Faith Fairchild. I'm surprised the umpire didn't call an out immediately. I guess he didn't need to. It didn't matter anyway. And yeah. the PX get the win, win conference game here today. That is the – Flavor of the day, man. You got to win some conference games. Final score is four to two. Collinsville pulls out the win, and we have a post game show to tell you about here. Brought to you by Chiropractic Works in Collinsville, owned and operated by Dr. Chris McCluskey. He and his crew are focused on helping people live high quality lives through chiropractic care and wellness. You can visit Dr. McCluskey at Chiropractic Works in Collinsville, 410 Regency Center, just off of the Beltline Road. Give them a call at 618-343-3602 or online at chiropracticworkscollinsville.com. Cayhawks win it here this afternoon, 4-2. to two. Back with the post-game coverage in just a moment here on the Cayhawks Sports Network. My name is Rayshon Taylor, collegiate basketball player at SIUE. At the end of January, I had an ACL injury. I've been searching for ways to come back as best as I can uh, after the construction. Dr. Chris introduced me to the soft wave machine. I'm gonna be honest, at first I was kind of scared because I didn't want it to shock me and hurt me too bad. And I had heard something about it and I did my research on it and it turns out it didn't actually hurt. It just uh, was a good pain. It just finding where it hurts to promote the healing and that's exactly what it did. I've actually had the surgery before. This time I feel like I'm back on my feet quicker much faster, I'm much stronger than I was up to this point last time. And honestly, I feel like I could play right now. I'm excited to get back on the court. Thankful that Dr. Chris introduced me to this. Do you have a big land improvement project that requires some outside help? Call Petroff Trucking Company. The Petroff companies have been shaping the metro area since 1975. Family owned and operated, Petroff Trucking Company can do the job and do it right. Hauling, excavating, and grading, they do that and more. Petroff Companies also has roll-off dumpster rentals. They also specialize in dirt and rock sales. Petroff Trucking Company can help you develop your land for your needs. Petroff Trucking Company. Check out their website, PetroffTrucking.com, or give them a call, 618-797-6100. Petroff Trucking Company shaping the metro area since 1975. The Junior Service Club of Collinsville has been a proud supporter of KOXSports.com and the KOX Sports Network from day one. Since 1934, the Junior Service Club of Collinsville has been providing women in the community an opportunity to make a difference with fundraisers and projects, all that go towards helping the needy in Collinsville. If you would like any information on any event sponsored by the Collinsville Junior Service Club, head to Facebook, type in Collinsville Junior Service Club, and then click on the event tab. We thank the Collinsville Junior Service Club for their continued support of the Kayhawk Sports Network and KayhawkSports.com. Hi, Purple and White fans. This is Dan Mode, class of 1989. I'm with New American Funding. Myself and New American Funding are proud sponsors of Cayhawk Athletics. As we have great coaches at CHS on all the courts, fields, and tracks, we like to coach you through the home buying process and read www.danmodeloans.com. Let's support our student athletes at CHS. They deserve the best. Thank you for your time. Plumbing or electrical problems? Is your AC or heater on the fritz? There are dozens of companies out there, but do you really know who you're letting in your home? Trust Tiger. Our technicians are clean cut, drug free, and background checked. What other company can make this bold statement? Our 24 hour emergency service will ensure you schedule your appointment today. Tiger. The Collinsville Education Association is a proud supporter of KOXSports.com and for our children. The CEA advocates excellence and equity in public education and represent over 400 educators in 11 schools in both Madison and St. Clair counties. For more information, you can visit the Collinsville Education Association's Facebook page or the CEA's website 
at CollinsvilleCEA.org. Just because we're adults doesn't mean we don't have toys, am I right? If your adult toys consist of boats, campers, or RVs, then you need to call the GASA Storage Team of Professionals. Winter weather in the Midwest can be quite harsh, and finding a place to properly store those expensive toys for winter can be just as rough as a Midwest winter. That's where the GASA Storage Team comes in, with outdoor self-storage and covered storage for your toys. They even have tractor-trailer parking. Conveniently located at Horseshoe Lake Road in 111 in Pontoon Beach. GASA Storage, for the safe storage of all of your toys. Contact the GASA Storage Team, GASA Storage at gmail.com, or call today, GASA Storage Team, 618-797-6100. The Ortho Gold TRT, Tissue Regeneration Machine, is revolutionary new technology. It's known as a shockwave machine. In the hospital setting, it's lithotripsy. The machine looks sort of like an ultrasound head, but it's much different technology. It drives sound waves into tissue at 3,500 miles an hour. It's a three to five minute non-invasive treatment. This is revolutionary technology. It's great for acute, which means you know injured uh, tissue, uh, new injuries per se. Also chronic conditions. We have many people who have canceled knee replacements and shoulder replacements and treated lots of plantar fasciitis, foot, ankle problems. Overall, the OrthoGold TRT uh, soft wave machine is revolutionary technology. We've been very excited to bring it to our practice and we've already helped a tremendous amount of people with it and we're looking forward to helping a, a, a lot more. And we welcome you back into the Chiropractic Works post game show here on the Khawk Sports Network. Lady Khawks pick up their second win of the year as they down the Alton Lady Redbirds by a final score of four to two. Collinsville, they picked up four runs on five hits, committed one error, left six base runners on. Alton had two runs on nine hits. They committed two errors and left seven base runners. And Marissa Thomas, she gets the uh, win. And hit, she walked two. And another big thank you to Chris Kettler for hanging out with us on the other microphone. My name is Todd Duke. We'll be back with you on Saturday morning from Fletcher Team from Springfield, Illinois. We'll be on the air. I don't even know when. JV has the first game at 11 o'clock in the morning, and we'll be on after that one's over and we get through the festivities for the strikeout cancer pink out game. So until then, my name is Todd Duke. Everybody have yourselves a fantastic rest of your Thursday.